Moving on, we have with us today AE Solar's Head of Research and Development, Dr. Hamid Hanifi. He's here today to talk about rethinking half cell interconnection and module design and how these help boost energy output and durability of solar modules. Dr. Hamid, welcome to Tayang News. Thank you, Arno, for the kind introduction. Um, could you please release the screen share for me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much for the kind introduction, and I welcome everybody to this uh, presentation. So as my colleagues today talked about uh, solar cells and efficiency, I will focus more on module technology and um, the energy. But before that, let's have a short introduction about our company. We are since 2003 in markets, and this year in InterSolar, we celebrated our 20 years of anniversary. We are a customer-oriented uh, company with technical innovations, and we are at the moment available in over 100 countries. Um, this year, um, due to our 20 years of anniversary, uh, we also had a refreshment on logo, so we will be recognized with this logo from now on. This year in InterSolar 2023, we presented our uh, standard and innovative modules, and we also received the PBEL trophy as uh, one of the top performers in reliability and performance of our modules. This ensures the durability and quality of, of our modules, and the test results can be directly uh, seen by the website of uh, PBEL. This year, we also, as I mentioned, celebrated our 20 years anniversary in the first day of InterSolar, and we could at the end have a party with our colleagues, uh, partners, and customers all together. For those who could not participate in InterSolar, I will give you a short uh, introduction about our products in portfolio. So they are categorized in modules which are targeting utility and rooftops, and we have one module which only targets the rooftop application. We have our Aurora series with Crick technology, which is the mainstream product and has the highest flexibility with electrical properties, dimension, and bill of materials. Our heterojunction products comes with the marketing name of Comet. Uh, it is a perfect choice for places with low light conditions and uh, uh, high temperature. The top one series comes with the name of Meteor. This is an evolution to the PERC technology, and it comes as one of the products with the highest durability in terms of degradation. And in this presentation, I will uh, focus more on Terra module, which is uh, our new module designs, and it comes with PERC and Topcon technology. You will uh, hear about this product more in the coming slides. We have also one product for repowering projects. So repowering becomes a new market uh, also in PV. Uh, and for this purpose, we still try to make modules uh, which can match the dimensions and properties of the old and existing power plants. And finally, for the rooftops, we have our smart hotspot free PV module. And this year in InterSolar, we presented the second generation of it. It's a shade resistant PV module. And as you can see in this uh, picture, it can produce more energy than it is shaded compared to the similar half cell module. Previously, we had this module with full size solar cell, and this year we presented the half cell design. Here in the picture, you can see that uh, these two PV modules, one of them is our shade resistant module, and the one on the right side is a standard module. You see, uh, this modules are being illuminated with light sources and they provide energy for the pumps which pumps the colored water here in the cylinders you can see after critically shading the middle of the module so in a really critical point um, the standard capsule module cannot produce any more energy so you see no jump from the green water while or hotspot free or shade resistant 2.0 is still producing energy although being critically shaded so you can see that we have already a drop of water in red color. The second module is our uh, Terra, which is a half cell module with some extra add-ons. This module uh, has a different interconnection design. It has no self-shading on the rear side, high tolerance for partial shading, especially from the short side. 
and it has higher resistance against wind and snow due to the module design. But to tell you why this module is interesting for you, I would start with a very short motivation. Europe plans for one terawatt of solar installation until 2030. Of course, the other continents have their own plans, but uh, considering the biggest uh, market in Europe, which is Germany, if you look at the market, we see that there are some challenges for this. One of them is the land limit, and the other is land acquisition costs. If you look at the price development within the past 23 years for land and PV module, we can see that the price of the land has increased consistently. And we have at the moment um, over a, a plus of 236% from the 100%. But meanwhile, we see that the price of the PV module has dropped drastically. So um, this was also mentioned in the presentation by Marcos, and we see that by the end of 2023, we have a price drop of minus 96.7% compared to the year 2000. So this brings uh, the topic of having more energy per area. So considering the optimized efficiency of land and system, which becomes a new topic, we need to get the highest benefit from the land. And here in this presentation, I will discuss two scenarios with you. One scenario is that we have more modules per area. This means in a power plant, we bring the strings closer to each other and accept the, the partial shading, but pack more modules per area. And the other is the dual usage of land like agrivoltaics. And with this, I would like to introduce our Terra module, which can be a perfect choice for these applications. Terra is a half cell module with uniform cell design. So here in the middle, you see no separation between the left and right part of the module. The module is planned to be launched with uh, PERC and popcorn technologies with 550 and 575 watt peak uh, power respectively. The module can be also delivered with aluminum or plastic frame. The technical highlights of the module is that the module on the rear side has no self shading from junction boxes, cables, or frame. It is highly snow and wind resistant, and it is shading tolerant, especially on the shorter side. The launch date of the product is expected to be by the end of 2023. But to walk you through the interconnection, I would like to make a comparison between a classical, typical half cell module with mirrored design and the half cell module with uniform design, so or Terra module. The half cell module with mirrored design, uh, we have all the solar cell and top part of the module in series, and it's similar also for the bottom part of the module. And then they are all connected in the middle of the module in parallel. The interconnection for our uniform design or Terra is realized differently. Here, we have two substrings connected in parallel and then form a twin substring. And then the twin substring is in series with the uh, next twin substrings and so on till the end. So we have with, with this interconnection, uh, we can still keep the similar electrical properties, but of course it brings us different features. But why this is important for you? As I mentioned, the high land acquisition costs and high module efficiencies might affect the system design. So this justifies to reduce the space between the strings and accept partial shading in parts of the day. So here, this is uh, in case that we bring the modules closer to each other, in some parts of the day, we will have some partial shading on the bottom part of the module, but meanwhile, we can pack more strings per limited area. So this might increase your levelized cost of energy at the end of the day, in case that the system is designed properly and you have a shading tolerant PV module. So for this purpose to show how our module is shade tolerant compared to the other module, I want to make a benchmark between a classical full cell module, a typical half cell module, and also Terra module, and see the power change in case that we shade the bottom row of PV module. So here, 100% shading means that the bottom row of the module is completely shaded. You can see the, half, the full cell module with classical design, 
loses power proportionally until after shading the complete row, we have almost no power. This story is different for half cell module with mirror design. We see that the module loses energy faster because the solar cells are uh, smaller. However, after reaching 50% means that when one half cell is completely shaded, the module, uh, the bypass diodes is already being triggered and the half of module will be bypassed. However, the other half is still producing power. So we have a fast decrease in power until 50%, and then it remains constant uh, for the rest of the module, or at least the top half. And finally, the half cell module with uniform design. Here, as you can see, the solar cells are reorientated for 90 degrees. So in case that you shade 50%, none of the solar cells are completely shaded. And meanwhile, they are not, since they are not in series with the neighboring substrings, the neighboring substring still produces current in full capacity. So you can see after 50% shading, the module has already 35% more energy compared to the um, half cell module with mirror design. And by the end of shading uh, the complete rows, the bypass diode will be triggered, but you only lose one third of the module power. So in case that we want to see it graphically, you can see after shading the bottom row, the full cell module is completely out of operation. Half cell module loses 50% of the power and uh, half cell module with uniform design or Hera module loses only 36%. So one third of the module. Therefore, with this, we can get more energy after reducing the space between the strings and accepting a partial shading on our system. The other application is agri-photovoltaic. Um, it becomes a new topic, as also mentioned by uh, our colleague Marcus Fischer, the dual usage of land uh, for energy and agriculture can be highly efficient. So the benefits here is, as I mentioned, you have increased combined efficiency per area. However, there are two big challenges. One big challenge is self-shading of the module components. Since the backside of the module is being exposed directly to the sun, then a small portion of partial shading can lead to a big mismatch because you produce higher current and this can influence the higher power drop as well when the cells become even partially shaded. And on the back side of the module, we always have junction boxes, uh, frame, and cables. The other factor is the increased wind load, which uh, since the modules are mounted uh, vertically, you're going to have a lot of wind loads or mechanical loads on the module, which can uh, lead to the module bending and breakage of the cells. But let's see how Terra can help you to overcome these problems. This is the back view of our Terra module. Module has no self-shading on the rear side because of the positioning of the junction box cables and uh, the design of the frame. With the interconnection design, with this interconnection design, we can shift the junction boxes to the longer edge of the module. Here we use integrated bypass diode to even push the junction box further to the corners. So here, as you can see, uh, if the module is connected to the neighboring string, there is no uh, shading on the rear side from the cables and junction boxes, and the frame is not covering the solar cells partially. So you have the highest bifaciality, but in module level. So here, this is independent from solar cell bifaciality or efficiency. This is basically the highest bifaciality in module level. The other factor which I mentioned was the wind load. Um, this can be also a snow load when the module is mounted uh, with tilt angle. But let's see how our module can help to overcome this problem. And for this purpose, again, I would like to do the similar benchmark between the full cell module, half cell module with mirror design, and half cell module with uniform design, which is again our Terra module. In case that we um, have high wind loads in these three modules, of course, we have a bending of the laminate. It can cause the bending of the laminate and breakage of the cells. So in case that we look at um, the finite element analysis of the first principle stress on the backside of the solar cells, 
at 5,400 pascals. You can see um, here the stress induced uh, to the PV modules, these three designs. But one solution is, of course, to go to the shorter cells in case, or smaller cells. So in case that we shift from full cell module to a half cell module with mirror design, we're going to have a less cell fracture probability. However, with the half cell module, we have more spacing between the solar cells. So the module is slightly bigger, which again increases the cell fracture probability. So the long modules are more prone to this mechanical loads. But in case that we rotate the solar cells for 90 degree and reorientate the module design and put the long side of the cells in parallel to the long side of the module, uh, we can reduce the stress caused by bending and we can achieve a significantly lower cell fracture probability. This value for our module is going to be 75% less fracture probability, which of course increase the durability of the module and life, lifetime of the module. With this, I would like to give the takeaway message of my presentation. So first of all, Hera is a standard module for all application. This can be used in utility scale on rooftops, but it has some extra features where the other modules cannot perform very well. This module shines. The main features of Terra is no self-shading on the backside, high durability against wind and snow, high tolerance against partial shading, and highest bifaciality in module level. The module is a perfect choice for vertically mounted application due to the higher durability uh, against wind and, of course, no self-shading. Before I finish and give the final uh, takeaway message, we should consider that the project owners pay for efficiency and power in euro per watt peak. So you buy the module according to the efficiency and power, but what you really need is energy in euro per kilowatt hours. So in case that you have, uh, of course, efficient solar cells, you can have more energy. But in case that you can boost your design and, even, and get even more out of it, you, uh, you're going to uh, have a win here only by reorganizing and redesigning the module. So Terra uh, is a module which promises a longer lifetime and higher energy yield to achieve a lower levelized cost of electricity even without changing the materials of the module. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and I'm open for the questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Hamid. That was uh, really an interesting one. Um, and uh, so there are lots of questions. I think there's just coming up in the chat room. Um, there is one that I just read out. Um, Dear Dr. Hanifi, as I noticed, bypass diodes in Terra modules are integrated inside the modules and not in the junction box. Does that mean they are laminated inside the encapsulation? If yes, does heating in lamination does not defect the diodes? And also what would happen in case of diode failure? Okay, so um, basically this module, as we have planned, we, we can deliver this module with integrated bypass diodes and also diodes which are packed inside the junction box. In any case, it does not change anything in the design because the junction boxes are moved to the longer side of the module. But regarding the uh, temperature of the, I mean, uh, the first question was that, yes, this is in laminated inside the glass glass foil. So uh, here, the um, partial shading, basically, which can cause the uh, heating of the bypass diodes, might, of course, increase the temperature of the uh, diode inside the laminate. But uh, as we have tested so far, it cannot lead to any serious problems or uh, burn marks inside the laminate. Um, of course, we need to consider, for example, for some cases, in case that the module is mounted vertically, basically, you, you don't have any uh, typical partial shading for this scenario. But uh, the solutions that we tested so far, we also considered using active bypass diodes that we can reduce the uh, temperature of the module. So here you don't have a typical uh, heat losses over 130 degrees. So that should not be a big concern. And in case that the diodes fail, uh, I think it will be the same scenario uh, as we have uh, for uh, modules inside the junction box. So basically, you do no repairs on the module after the bypass diode fails. 
So when the bypass diode fails, it doesn't matter whether it's inside the junction box or inside the laminate, any other module should be replaced. Fair enough. Thank you so much, Dr. Hamid. Uh, and uh, may I request you to please stay back for the rest of the time and uh, answer any questions that are there in the chat room. Yeah, sure, sure. It was Thank my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.